Hey guys, welcome back to Sparkman Homestead. My name is Krista. Sorry about the horrible lighting. I am just right by my seed starting rack, so it has this pink glow to it. I thought I would turn the camera on today because I need to get some seed started. I'm headed out to my greenhouse. We do not have very nice weather today. It is like really overcast and just kind of yucky. Just making sure I have everything. I already have some stuff I'm up potting out in the greenhouse. I've got my seeds. We're getting this. I wanna bring the mister out with us. I'm starting the seeds and it helps um, to have the mister out there with me so that I can just miss them. It is a very, very gloomy day outside, um, but on my schedule I have today is the day to start my brassicas. So that is our cauliflowers, our broccoli, our kale, our kohlrabi. You know what I forgot inside? I forgot my list of what I actually need to start because this is just my basket of all of my seeds I'm starting this year. And I do not want to start my tomatoes yet. Even though the farmer's almanac says to start tomatoes from today until the 26th, I know in my area, if I start my seeds on the 20th of February, those tomato plants are going to be insanely big and probably outgrowing their pods by the time that I actually get to plant them, which in my area I have learned is probably the first or second week of May, depending on what the 10 day forecast looks like. They say that my last frost date is April the 12th. That's not the situation. At least it's never been the situation for the last four years that I've lived on this property. I followed it the very first year and I started them like the second that I could start them. They all outgrew their pots. So I've kind of learned not to start them in February. I usually wait until March to start my tomatoes, but I'm gonna try to go with the Farmer's Almanac and do it on the last possible date, which is February the 26th. I do want to show you what I did yesterday though. So yesterday I got to spend some time in the garden and I got to get some radishes in the ground yesterday. I did three different varieties and you notice that um, white cloth that's on top of the garden beds. What I do is it is like a tool material, you know, like I don't know what other name other than tool. You know the stuff like wedding veils are made out of? It's like a fine mesh material. Anyways, I put that over top of my garden beds when I put my seeds in the ground because it prevents the birds from getting the seeds out. If I don't put that on, I don't know if you can see, we've got trees there. Not only if you can, if you can hear it, we have a lot, a lot of birds. I actually, I sometimes make fun and say, I feel like I live at a bird sanctuary, <laughs> but I love it though. It is really, really peaceful having all these birds. However, they like to eat the seeds that I put in the ground. So I use those um, covers on top. And as soon as the seed actually starts germinating, I take those covers off and then the birds don't get at them because they're no longer seeds in the ground. I have found that the squirrels absolutely love to eat my radishes. I think it's because all of their acorns are in those beds. <laughs> so they're trying to come and dig up all their acorns. So I think this year I'm actually probably gonna end up putting like a little bit of a hoop house over top of it. I'm just running inside really quickly just to go and grab my seed starting sheet that I wrote out. Okay, got it now. Now I know what I'm planting today. Uh, not that I'm going to necessarily stick to this. I always start the garden season out. I have a garden book here and what it is, is I write down every year. Well, this will be the second year I'm doing it. I write down what seeds I'm starting, when I'm starting them and when they germinate. And that way I can look back next year as a reference to what I started and when I started it. The other handy thing that I wrote down last year that I think is going to be a huge asset to me this year is I wrote down all of our frost dates. So just looking at this, this is exactly what I'm talking about by it being kind of off with our frost dates. Here I have April the 26th 
low 36 and we actually got a frost on that day. Then it goes to mention that May the 1st, our averages were, the lows were 53 and our night, our highs were the 70s. On May the 6th and May the 7th, the low was 47. So I didn't actually plant my peppers out that year, last year, until May the 11th. And it is because those nights were just too cold for peppers. My peppers did insane last year. The ones that were in a really good garden bed that had really good soil and had perfect lighting, I got an insane bumper crop from them. My banana peppers, I've never gotten that many before. The shishitos, everything did so well. So I've learned just to kind of wait for those things. But I did plant my tomatoes out last year, May the 4th, so I'm thinking I'm probably gonna go, again, depending on what that 10 day forecast looks like, probably gonna stick to about that timeline. Um, but then I also had a list last year of what I planted and where I planted it. I like to keep it as a future reference because sometimes I don't like to put things in the same spot that I did last year. I like to kind of do rotational stuff. Um, now, mind you, I've done peppers in the exact same spot for two years in a row and I, I've had no issues with them. Um, so it just gives me, you know, a rough idea. So what is today's date? We are on February the 20th today, and it says that I need to start basil, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, parsley. Oh my gosh, I forgot my parsley inside. Parsley, you have to soak 24 hours or more before you actually try to plant them. They need to, it's like a bean plant where it has to be soaked before you can plant it. So they're inside, I'll grab them later. We need to do a couple of our herbs, which, I forgot inside again. Catnip. I'm going to start that today. It is in my freezer. Catnip is one of those herbs that needs a cold stratification. Echinacea is another one of those ones. So what that means is you pretty much have it really, really, really cold before you plant it. So it kind of mimics the, the seed sitting in the soil over the winter and then in the warm weather it wants to come up. So we're kind of just tricking it in a way by putting it in the freezer. So I have my catnip and echinacea actually in my freezer that I have to go and grab. We will get them later. Um, we also need to start borage, uh, feverfew, and hyssop today, and calendula. What else? I have a lot on the go today. Now, the one thing that I thought I would be planting today, which I'm not, or not planting, sorry, seed starting, was kohlrabi. But it actually says that I'm not supposed to start that until February the, the 26th um, because it is such a fast growing uh, seed. So we're going to wait for that. We'll do that the same day we do our tomatoes. It looks like the 26th is going to be a really busy day for us because it says that is the same day that I should be um, direct sowing my peas and my spinach also. So we are going to be up potting our petunias. I don't know if you can see them, but they all have their true leaves and they're starting to outgrow these uh, seed trays. So I want to up pot these petunias today and I also want to up pot this um, cam canamile. 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 I don't know how to say it. Um, I want to up pot this also because it is got its true leaves on it. So I'm going to have a couple of empty spots in this particular tray. So I'm thinking that with these empty spots, I'm going to clear out the dirt and then I'm going to throw my parsley in there because I also have peppermint in here and I have marjoram and I have pansies and these are not ready to be up potted. They are way too small. And then I also have a tarragon here that, I don't know if you guys can see, I have a tarragon here that did not germinate at all. Like not one single seed germinated. So that may have been a couple of things. It may have been my error and planted it too deep, which I very much think was the case. Um, it wasn't that I didn't water it enough because I've been religiously watering these things twice a day. Um, I, or it could just be bad, bad seeds. I hate to blame it on the seeds, but they were, they were low seeds and they were at the end of the season. Not that that matters. Again, seeds are good for a fairly long time, but 
end. We'll just chalk it up to me planting them too deep. So we're gonna give it another try, and if they don't germinate a second time, then what I'm gonna do is probably just yard sale the package in my storm shelter. So that yard sale just means spraying it everywhere, like everything's everywhere. <laughs> You know when you go to a yard sale and there's stuff all over the yard because they're trying to sell it? That's what I mean by yard sailing if I say that. I'm just going to yard sale the seeds all into the storm shelter and if they take, they take. But I'm also probably going to end up going and buying some starts at the Amish for tarragon. But again, we will give it one more try. So let's get these up potted and then we will get our other seeds sewed. And guys, I own a pair of gardening gloves, but I really like just to get my hands in the dirt. I find that it's very therapeutic. And plus when I have gloves on, I find that I can't get like these delicate flowers out. So one thing that we actually have to do first before we pull any of these out is we need to fill these pots up with our soil. This soil that I have in my tote down here on the ground, that is actually a seed starting soil and it doesn't have enough compost in it or nutrients that I would like when I'm up potting. So I think what I'm gonna actually have to do first is fill up one of my seed starting trays that we're gonna do all of our brassicas in. I need to get this filled up first. And then what I'm gonna do is just throw some extra um, worm castings and some fertilizer like feed into this soil and mix it in before I up pot anything. And this I actually am gonna put my gloves on for because this is messy work. I always squish my gloves first before I put them on because I leave my gloves, well, one set, I have a lot of sets everywhere, but I leave them in here and we've got spiders. So I always squish them first to kill any type of bug that may be in them. So I have one of my trays on the bottom here. We're just gonna get these filled. Actually, I don't need this tray on the bottom. Not quite yet. just filled all my larger pots. I actually had to make a new batch of soil because I knew that what I had in there wasn't going to be enough for all the up potting that I have to do this week. So I just had to make a new batch. So I just filled these up really quickly. Um, they're just not quite to the brim. Well enough. So I guess we will start with our petunias. I'm just going to move this over here so I know that this is what I'm actually up potting. Not that I won't be able to really recognize them. Now I am going to be brutal with this and I am probably going to end up getting rid of some of the smaller ones. But what I'm gonna do is just take these roots and just kind of put them in like this, and then compact them a little bit. And then from here, I'm just gonna thin them because I don't, like, this is going to be too many for this pot. You know what I think I'm actually going to do is I'm going to leave the ones that are really, like, clustered like this. I might leave them until they get a touch bit bigger, and then I might thin them from there. Look at the root system on this chamomile. It really needed to get up potted. So I've got the pansies all, or the petunias, sorry, the petunias are all cleaned out and then the chamomile is all cleaned out and I have them all up potted. So that is that tray. I have a couple empty pots still. I have petunias and the chamomile. I did not thin the chamomile out and I probably should go through it and thin it out. And then I have the other tray over here of the other petunias. Now our weather this week is kind of all over the place. I think Wednesday our high is supposed to be like 76 or 77 or something. These are cold weather crops so these can do fine 
when they are established and big, they can do fine in frosts. My greenhouse, like right now it's 60 in here and I think it's, let's see what it's outside. It'll probably be about the same outside because I know when my greenhouse, when it's not sunny, it usually matches the temperature that it is outside. It's 53 outside, so it's 60 in here. So I think what I'm going to do, because I do not have a lot of space in my house um, for seeds, so I think what I'm gonna do is actually leave these ones that we just up potted out here in the greenhouse. And if I notice, because tonight I think the low is supposed to be 50, which these will be fine in here at 50. And then tomorrow and the next day, it's supposed to be sunny and this greenhouse will get to well over a hundred in here if it's sunny out. So we're gonna leave these in here for now and just kind of watch the temperature. Okay, so I cleared out a couple of these spots. This is the old um, seed starting tray that I had. This is some parsley here that we've had soaking. This is just this variety. I have two different varieties that I'm growing. And then we have to cover these a quarter inch so I think what I'm gonna do, because this has got water in it and these are super small seeds and they're wet, I'm just gonna like pour this in. Then some of the seeds are gonna come out with the water. And then now I'm gonna have to thin these like crazy because I just put a whole bunch in here. But that's okay, I guess. I'm just gonna take a light dusting of soil and just kind of put it on top. Normally it is like, I love having music on and just kind of zoning out to music, but today there's the sound of crickets and frogs and birds. So I am out here really just soaking up the sounds of nature today because even though it's overcast and it's you know, not warm outside, it's still, it sounds like spring outside and it's really awesome. And then this is the other variety that we're gonna put in. And then we'll do the same thing, we'll just kind of dump it in. This also needs a quarter inch, so we'll just lightly cover it with a little bit of soil and just tap it down. Okay, so we've got our parsley done. I also grabbed my echinacea and my catnip. I have a lot of echinacea already kind of throughout my property. I really wanna get a nice collection of echinacea in the front because I really wanna be able to not only harvest the top part of the plant, but I'm really hoping to actually be able to harvest some of the root system. So the ones that I have already planted, this will be their third year, so I can start potentially harvesting the roots. So I wanna have some other ones around the property so that I'm not taking away from next year's echinacea because the bees absolutely love echinacea. So I really like having this. Now the reason why I am reusing this pot because normally I would not reuse something where I just had something started. It's just, these other ones are not ready to up pot and I have a very small seed starting thing and I really can only fit a couple of these um, these particular things underneath my lights at a time so I need to kind of maximize <laughs> what I have so that's why I'm reusing this typically I would not reuse these spots but hopefully it will turn out to be okay write my labels down before I put any seeds in them. I have a tendency to put the seeds in and then forget what, what I put where. So this is gonna be one tray here. I am thinking that my tomatoes definitely are going to have to get started later and it's only because I have a very limited amount of seed starting trays, like these little small ones. So, Thousands of blackbirds. You can hear them. Let's see if I can show you. Oh. 
That right there is why I put that stuff over top of my garden beds because there's a lot of birds here. So my garden beds become a buffet for the birds in springtime. So that's how I kind of prevent it. So I'm just gonna make my labels up and then get the seeds in and then I can go over and kind of tell you what I am starting right now. But as I was saying before I got distracted by the birds, my tomatoes are gonna have to get started later because I don't have enough of these seed starting trays. But not only that, I just don't have the space underneath my grow lights. I really need to get a couple more grow lights, but this year kind of our budget was um, the perennials. So unfortunately I didn't, I didn't have any extra funds to put into um, getting any more grow lights, but that'll probably be next year's Next year's goal You guys I've noticed that It just comes so quickly like I was thinking oh, you know I have lots of time to get everything started and then I realized I'm like no It's like every single week There is one garden project that I have to get done and I can't believe how quickly it's kind of snuck up on me which I mean I'm not complaining at all but it really does go a lot faster than you think like I mean I I absolutely love being in the garden and I, I miss it so much when I have to kind of put my garden to sleep but it really does come back very quickly I'm just getting my carnations seed started this is the last for this tray that I'm reusing I was just reading about it now carnations are a perennial so wherever I choose to put these these are gonna come back every single year which is I, I love perennials because it's like you do the work one time and I mean you definitely have to go and fertilize and maintain it but you don't have to do this over again um, and I was just reading about carnations and it says here that days to maturity is 130 to 140. That is a really long time. Um, we have a growing season here, and, and I do apologize, I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video. If you are new here, I am in South Central Kentucky. I'm just above Nashville, just below Bowling Green, Kentucky. And I am in zone 7B, 7A, and all it really depends. It's most 7B. My actual zoning goes according to Portland, Tennessee. So I have 199 days to grow things. So these are absolutely fine. I am looking really forward to these and it says that they can go into a vase and have a life once it's cut 14 days and they have a clove-like smell. I am really, really looking forward to these. I got these seeds from MI Gardener. If I really, really like them, I think what I will end up doing, sorry, I just have to see how, uh, one eighth, just checking to see the seed dead. Um, if I'm really liking them, I'm going to maybe potentially see about ordering some other colors in carnations. It, they're such a beautiful flower and they're like, I mean, when you look at like most, um, flower displays, it usually has carnations in it. So I'm looking forward to having this perennial in my garden. So I wanted to show you guys, remember when we came in here, it was 60. Look at what it is now. It is almost 80 in here. Because what I was saying, the second, it's not even full sun. Like it is overcast still, but it is not like as overcast because the rain has stopped. As soon as even the glimpse of sun comes out, this thing just heats up in here. We've been in here for almost, what, an hour, maybe two hours, and it has gone up 20 degrees just from a couple of clouds moving. So that's why I'm saying like, I'm not super concerned about leaving those things in here overnight, even though I double checked and tonight's low is supposed to be 48, which those things will do perfectly fine because again, they're frost hardy. They're not baby little seedling, seedlings. They are kind of bigger. So I think that those will be fine. And if they're not, it was just not meant to be and I'll have to go and buy them. No, I won't buy them. I'll just restart them. Um, okay, so now I'm going to get started on getting my broccoli all done.
we got everything all started. So I'm just gonna show you guys quickly what I put in my seed trays. Uh, this might be repetitive because I did a video showing you guys what I was gonna do for my garden, but I just didn't wanna leave you hanging with not showing you what I actually put in. Uh, so I ran out of these, so I just emptied this package out. So I'm doing some strawberry blonde calendula. We're doing this calendula also, and I'm doing one other calendula. I'm gonna do this one. I planted more of this seed because I really love the vibrant color of it. Um, this one, I just like the name and that's why I bought it. And then after growing them, I realized that they're pretty, like, I mean, they are a pretty flower, but they're pretty dull looking. And I really like the really bold pops of color in my garden. I like to go like really colorful. And then I love like just accents of white and black here and there. So I have like, my garden is a very eclectic mix of stuff. For basils, I started quite a bit of them and it's only because I go, when I plant my tomatoes, I go tomato, basil, tomato, basil. And it's just really nice accent to the tomato. It's just kind of a companion plant to with the tomatoes. Um, I don't know if it necessarily deters pests. It might, it, it might deter them away from tomato I just always done it and I eat so much basil because it is my favorite thing um, basil is up there as my one of my favorite smells so I planted a lot of it um, I did a lettuce leaf basil and then I did a mammoth basil these essentially are the exact same thing just different names um, but I do love them because they're a nice big basil and you can like wrap it you can take a tomato a piece of mozzarella a little bit of balsamic glaze and then wrap it in those big pieces of basil and it is just it's amazing I also did a sweet basil and then I did a lemon basil and then a dark opal basil. Oh, and then I did this one. I hardly have any of these seeds left, so I need to actually make a note for myself that I have to order some of these for next year because this basil is absolutely amazing for making pesto with. Um, and I'm running low on that one. So that is it for the basils. Um, now for broccolis, I did some of this and then I did some of this. Broccoli is going to be a pretty major focus for us because we both love broccoli, like really love it. Um, so I really want to get enough preserved in the spring that we can kind of, we probably won't really eat a lot of it in the summer because so much of it in the winter my goal is just to really get a lot put in the freezer this year so focusing on the spring garden and then getting more in the fall and then for cauliflowers we grew this one and this one and this one we like cauliflower it's not our favorite we prefer a broccoli so I'm probably gonna grow more broccoli than cauliflowers and then for cabbages I grew this one this one and then this one this is my first time trying to grow this and I've heard really really good things about it that it produces a really nice size head of cabbage would be nice because I love coleslaw and I love making sauerkraut so I want to get a nice mix of cabbage in there. Kale is one of our absolute favorite things to have. It's our favorite to have in the fall and the winter. Um, so I'm going to grow this. This is my favorite variety of kale. Um, so I want to get quite a bit of it in there. And then this is Stephen's favorite variety of kale. So I have quite a bit of that growing. And then again, my intent is to also put some in the freezer so that we can have that for soups and stuff in the winter. And then I'm gonna try some of this kale also. I grew this one year and I don't think it did super well for me. I don't think I was growing in the best conditions. So I am wanting to try it again this year. And then for flowers, I mentioned before, I did this carnation and then I did some of these. This is the first time I'm, guys, this is a dollar store packet. I paid 25 cents for it. Dollar store is a great resource if you are wanting just have to try to do some flowers in your garden or even vegetables. Dollar Shore has seeds. I don't know where these seeds, like where they're coming from. Um, I've heard I've heard some stuff about the Dollar Shore seeds that you shouldn't buy them because they are um, 
not necessarily the best seeds, but if you don't have money, a seed is better than no seeds. So I bought these to try these out and then I also bought these ones to try them out as well. So I'm hoping to put these all along the front of my garden just kind of as the border, like the front border of it and then slowly working my way up to bigger flowers near the back towards the house. Um, and then I replanted this tarragon hoping it come I'm hoping it works this time and I actually had to redo some of the marjoram as well because it just didn't take either um, and then I showed you the parsley already and then we just put in some catnip we put in some echinacea and then the last one we did today was some of this so that's what we did today so I'm gonna get these in the house and get I put these domes on top of them, humidity domes. Uh, it helps just to get them germinated. So I'm gonna get these in the house under my grow lights with the heat lamp. Actually, these don't necessarily need grow lights right now because they're still under the ground. They need the heat more than anything. So I might just get these on some heating pads with these humidity domes and then hopefully we'll have some germination in the next week. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Hopefully it was not boring for you, but I thought I would just bring you out while I was in kind of my happy place. This greenhouse is definitely my, my favorite spot in the property. I love spending time in here. So thanks again for joining me. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great day or night whenever you're watching this and I will see you on the next video. Bye guys.